Dear Botswana, I don't have a lot of time. I only have one mission and I've been waiting nine years to accomplish it. And I specifically need your country to see it. So most people want to travel to a place because they want to enjoy a country or region's food, culture, atmosphere, natural beauty, or famous landmarks. And of course you have all those things, Botswana. I'm not saying you don't. I mean, come on, the Okavango Delta, and who doesn't love a proper Botswanan brai? Ooh, so good. But there's one very specific thing I've been fascinated with, and I need your country for it. It was mentioned nine years ago when I made the Botswana video on my channel. Now, I know I'm not the first person to document this, but I'm kind of a weird guy. I'm obsessed with sovereign demarcation lines and weird administrative administrative anomalies between countries. I mean, remember when I crossed the world's narrowest three country salient a few years ago in Burkina Faso, Togo, and Ghana? Well, apparently, most people don't realize that you and Zambia are the only two countries where you can go to properly see the world's only quadrupoint between four countries, also known as the Four Corners of Africa. And it's all thanks to you building that Kazungula Bridge in 2021. I have wanted to see this area before the bridge was even completed and the only way you could cross was by ferry. And before I even start with the footage, I know some of those annoying, well, actually trolls are gonna say, well, technically it's not exactly a quadra point as the Botswana-Zambia river boundaries form a straight line that creates a small 150 meter gap separating Zimbabwe from Namibia. And to that I say, shut the f up you annoying nerds. Like, yeah, I know they deliberately curved the bridge to avoid crossing a third border, but it's not like they actually demarcated the river in real life. Nobody, not even the locals care. They all just acknowledge it as a quadra point. Stop trying to take this from me. And you can literally see all four countries at once when standing on the spot. It's a f***ing quadra point. Deal with it. <sighs> Sorry, I take this sh very seriously. And after 10 years of doing this job, I know what's coming and I have to call it out before it starts. So how on earth did I even end up here? Well, long story short, I invited 18 of my elite subscribers to a Zimbabwe last country episode extravaganza trip for the Zimbabwe episode. And part of the itinerary involved going to this spot. In any case, I needed to document this Kazungula Bridge. This was like the crowning, most anticipated moment I was dreaming of. I needed it. So I'll cut all the flight montage stuff that I usually put in here and just cut right to the arrival into Botswana. How is everybody? Don't mind my candid camera. Okay, so Jure from Slovenia has something for me. There are some snacks. What do we got? You might you might know them from Here. the Balkans. Kokta, right? And yeah. oh my god, this is my favorite. He got me the cat food. <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I promised him I would eat it in this video. So thank you and cheers, Jure. Oh, I love this stuff. You have no idea how much I wish we had this in the USA. What do you think yeah. of the Slovenia episode? Actually, it's very good. The cultural aspect, like the mixture of Ro Romanian, the Germanic and the Slavic. Like I, I never thought about it that way. But when you when I he heard it, it was like, yeah, that's actually very accurate. Would you prefer wine or rakia? I don't drink. But if you could. And, uh, if I could, probably go for rakia. <laughs> okay, okay. Still, still. All right. You're still you're still the Balkan Slav. Okay, that, course, yeah, that's a good course. answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> Dear Botswana, I only have one full day in your country, so I have to make the most of it. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you really want to understand a country, go to the grocery stores and specifically the deli sections. This is a portal into understanding what a country values as food is such a vital variable that plays into their cultural makeup. All right, so mom and I are going to go to a Botswanan grocery store. Let's see, uh, let's see what they got. Shop right. Okay, they have so many interesting flavors of things. Cream soda flavored low-fat milk, Madila. It's like a chunky, creamy milk thing. Moringa drink, Moringa power. <laughs> Mon Monati Mabele. Interesting brand name, Rhodes. I wonder if that has anything to do with Rhodesia, Cecil Rhodes. Didn't they try to do everything in their power to get rid of that name? Although Botswana was not part of Rhodesia, it was Bishwana land, but you know what I mean. They have African style grits, maize porridge, banana flavor, vanilla cho- oh, I love grits. Hot and spicy chakalaka, hot mango achar, achar. See, you really get an understanding of what a country values and likes with their tastes 
when you go to like the grocery stores and see the interesting things that they put on the shelves. What do you think, mom? It's 13 kula for one dollar, so those are like 80 cents. See, they got pepper steak pie, chicken peri peri pie. They love their pies. Ooh, they have fish too. Do you have any spicy seasoned chicken? That one? Oh, that one? That one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it? That's it? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's good? Yeah. These pineapples are so small. Oh, it's spiky? Oh. Ah. Ooh. The leaves really are spiky. This one, Mom? Okay. All right, let's try. Whoa. Really sweet. Botswana pineapples. <laughs> All right, Botswana and hake fish, fried, okay. How is it, mom? Good. Everything's good? Mmm. Okay, cream soda flavored milk. I don't know what to think. It's weird. Dear Botswana, the Kazungula Bridge was the last thing we were scheduled to do, so of course we were going to experience a little bit of what you had to offer until then. First off, we were staying at the Sandpiper Villas in the town of Kasane, which was super nice and you could literally see Namibia on the other side of the river. The one problem though was the outlets. You guys use that super inconvenient type D plug outlet with the three fat prongs. Most international adapters don't have an option for that, so I had to ask the front desk for an adapter, which only connected to the C plug outlet, which I had to use to connect to my B type American outlet to charge my phone. I've been through worse, but still. Anyway, since we were in the north, it only made sense to go to Chobe National Park, right? I mean, it's one of your biggest attractions. Jeez, I can't believe it has the largest population of elephants in the world. What is it, like 120,000 of them? So today is Chobe National Park in Botswana. It's actually pretty cold. In the mornings, it's freezing. Yeah, Julian's like, freezing. we gotta wear these ponchos. Yes. My goodness, but uh, it's worth it, right? It is worth it. What do you want to see today? I, I kind of want to see lions. Oh, yeah, I, we all said lions. lions, yeah. Oh, and uh, leopards. I want to see a leopard. That's oh, the that's a little rare, but I hope we see it too. Yeah. <laughs> at Chobe National Park. We're just uh, looking at some animals. That is Namibia and uh, there's some water buffalo over there and there's a big chunky little hippo down there. We're seeing a lot of cool animals. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Checking my passport. Yeah. Yep. yep. For the Togo episode. Oh yeah, that's right. This is the Afghanistan visa. Whoa. They're marveling at my passport. <laughs> Dear Botswana, oh my goodness, it's crazy that elephants, the largest land animal, were the most common animal we saw. I mean, banning trophy hunting and having a law that allows the government to use military force to kill illegal poachers might have contributed to this biological phenomena, considering how low elephant populations are in most other African countries. But my God, not even five minutes into driving, our car was blocked by elephants on the road. We went on a river cruise on the Chobe River and they were jumping in the water next to us. Elephants, elephants, elephants everywhere. My goodness, you guys have so many of them. I love it. Keep those big guys protected. Unless a lion wants to eat them. In which case, let the lion do its thing because lions are even more rare.
Dear Botswana, I'm gonna be honest, I would venture to say I tried your braai steak for the first time and I will admit, it's probably in the top three best steaks I've ever had in my life. Oh my damn, you guys know how to grill. I'm sure the South Africans, Namibians, and other neighbors in the area will totally argue and say that they do it better than you, but I, hey, I'm just saying, it was amazing and I'm giving you credit for it. In any case, after that amazing meal, it was time to rest up because the next morning, we would finally do the thing. Okay, so today's a big deal. We're gonna do something I've been waiting to do for about nine years. We're gonna check out the Kazungula Bridge. Ah, I've wanted to do this for so long. I've been more excited for this than Victoria Falls and the, the Devil's Pool. Oh, I've wanted to do this. This is the moment of truth. Oh my goodness, they're letting us walk to the Kazungula Bridge. The quadrupoint of four countries, technical quadrupoint, some people say it's not, but whatever, shut up. Look at all my subscribers. They're all like excited to see a border. <laughs> like, this is uh, this is the geography now community. We're just yeah, we're just like happy to see a boundary. <laughs> oh, you know, like Victoria Falls, it was nice, and the safaris and the game, it was all good. But what, what the real geography nerds want is to see this bridge. This is what we want. <laughs> we want to see the bridge, the quadrupoint. Beyond the mainstream tourist stuff. Yeah, like, that's what we live for. That's the stuff we're interested in as well. So, geographic anomalies. That's what we're interested in. It's, uh, yeah. Administrative anomalies. <laughs> I can see it. That's the bridge. Welcome to Botswana. And then soon, welcome to Zambia. They literally let us get off the bus to see the quadra point. That's the bridge. We will accomplish something that most people don't care about. <laughs> Right there? Wait, somewhere it's over here. It's right where you're standing. This is the border. Sammy is right on the border. Oh, that's right. We are right on the border. <laughs> Look at that. We got it. We're, this is the border right here. Oh my god, that's that's Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe somewhere, Botswana. We are yeah, right now, freaking late Nate is straddling the border. <laughs> that's that's the border right between Botswana and Zambia. Yeah, we, we, we did something nobody really cares about, but it's awesome! <laughs> all right, so this is it. This is actually the point where technically all four countries meet. That little island thing over there is Namibia. Way over there, we just came from Botswana. This bridge inevitably goes to Zambia. And if you look somewhere way far over there, that's Zimbabwe. Four countries all in one spot and this bridge connects two of them this wasn't even built when i made the botswana episode it was just built like two years ago this is the point and uh my subscribers get to share it with me yeah <laughs> Dear Botswana, the moment I walked down that road and saw the peaks of the suspension bridge towers, I almost cried. I had been waiting almost a decade for this moment. This is what I live for. I'm not your typical travel vlogger that just boasts about nightclubs in Bali or rooftop infinity pools in Singapore, nor am I the type of person that wants to boast about doing extreme activities or doing ayahuasca in the jungles with shamans to show off how cultured I am. I just want to see the obscure and anomalous, things that no one pays attention to, but to me, they stick out like a sore thumb. I want to go places that have weird hidden secrets that most people would never notice on the surface, and either very few or no one has ever documented them. And this is the direction I want to go in and what I want to do after I finish the Zimbabwe episode. So thank you Botswana for giving me one of these rare moments. Sincerely, Barbs.